Hello there and welcome to this collection of notebooks and tutorials on advanced digital signal processing. This is a course offered by Professor Schuller at the Humenau University of Technology. I am Renato and on this notebook we'll talk about signal to noise ratio in quantization. So we will go through the definition of signal to noise ratio and we will calculate signal to noise ratio for different signals with different distributions. Let's get started. The signal to noise ratio can be defined as the ratio of the expectation of the signal power to the expectation of the noise power. In our case, the expectation of the noise power is the expectation of the quantization error power. So last time we calculated the expectation of the quantization error power and we found out that it's equal to the step size squared divided by 12. So what we need to do now is to calculate the average or the expectation of the signal power. So how do we obtain this? Yeah. So basically we can take the same approach as we did for the expectation of the power of the quantization error, which is basically the second moment of the distribution of the quantization error. So what we need to know now is uh, from our signal is the, its probability distribution. For the quantization error, it was a uniform distribution between minus step size divided by 2 to plus step sizes divided by 2. So a very simple case now would be if we would calculate the um, expectation of the signal power for a uniformly distributed signal with amplitude A divided by 2, which has values between minus A divided by 2 up to plus A divided by 2. So this is exactly the same case as we calculated for the quantization error. And then we will just need to replace here in this equation the step size by A. Yeah? So the probability distribution of a uniformly distributed signal uh, with amplitude A divided by 2 is 1 over A. And we can use our formula for average power. So then we replace here the um, PDF of a uniformly distributed signal here. And then when we calculate the expectation for a signal power for a uniformly distributed signal with amplitude equals to A divided by 2, we have the, the resulting power is A squared divided by 12. Yeah? So uh, what kinds of signals have this property? So um, uniformly distributed random values have this property. So basically this was... Uh, like our quantization error, but um, it's important to observe that speech or music and audio has a non-uniform PDF. Yeah? They are usually modeled by a Laplacian distribution or a Gaussian mixed model, and in this case, this formula here doesn't apply to non-uniform uh, distributions. Yeah? But um, other signals that have a uniform uh, PDF is a triangular wave and a sawtooth wave, yeah, because one can imagine uh, the vertical axis, uh, the function value covered by small intervals, and each interval is then passed into the same time span, and this means that the resulting PDF is also uniform. Yeah? So for um, uniform distribution, we have that the expectation of the power is a squared divided by 12. So now we can calculate our signal to noise ratio. It was the ratio of signal power divided by the, the noise power. And then and we have here the ratio. Uh, the, this is the signal power divided by the noise power. And we have that the signal to noise ratio is A squared divided by the step size squared. When we assume that our signal is full range, it means that the maximum values it goes from minus a divided by 2 to plus a divided by 2. And we can compute the step size if we know the number of bits of a converter. And then we're assuming uniform quantization. So here we have our step size is the full range divided by 2 to the power of n, uh, where n is equal to the number of bits. So if we then replace in this uh, signal to noise ratio equation, we replace the step size here we will have this equation here, and we obtain that the signal-to-noise ratio is 2 to the power of 2n. Yeah? Uh, usually, 
uh, we see signal to noise ratio in decibels, so we can convert this to decibels, and we have that the signal to noise ratio for uniformly distributed signals is n, the number of bits, times 6.02 dB. So this is a very famous rule of thumb that each bit more gives you 6 dB more in signal to noise ratio. Yeah? But it's important to uh, have in mind that this formula only holds for uniformly distributed full range signals. Then what happens if the signal is not full range? Yeah? What would be the signal to noise ratio with, with, if we have a signal with reduced range? Let's assume that our signal now has an amplitude of A divided by C, where C is a, a number uh, bigger than 1. Yeah, we can then simply um, put this into our equation, and then we will have here that the signal-to-noise ratio will be 2 to the power of 2 times N divided by C squared. So N is the number of bits, and C is this factor that we are reducing the amplitude of our signal. So in dB, this will translate to n times 6.02 dB minus 20 log of C. So we have a reduction of 20 log of this uh, factor uh, which we reduced our amplitude. So in case, for example, we have a one-tenth of the full range, yeah, then the, need, the resulting signal-to-noise ratio would be 20 dB lower than the signal-to-noise ratio uh, for a full-range signal. Uh, so that's what we see here. And this is the signal-to-noise ratio for full-range signal. If we are using, for example, a 16-bit quantizer, and here is the signal-to-noise ratio for one-tenth of full range, so we are 20 dB uh, below. Yeah, so this is very important uh, when deciding safety mar margin for full range and then as we, when we are, don't have uh, full range we have this reduction in the signal to noise ratio. And what if we don't have a uniformly distributed signal? So before we calculated the signal to noise ratio for a uniformly distributed signal, but as we saw, speech and audio signals are best modeled by a Laplacian distribution or a Gaussian mixed module, and even when we look at the sine wave, it doesn't have a uniform distribution. So in this next example, we are going to calculate the signal to noise ratio for a sine wave. Uh, observe that if a sinusoid represents a full range signal, its values are from minus a divided by 2 to plus a divided by 2, as in the previous cases. Yeah. Um, one of the first step, what we need to do is to calculate the PDF of a sine wave. So uh, what is the, the PDF of a sine wave? So basically, it is the normalized histogram such that its integral becomes 1 to obtain a probability distribution. Yeah. So here is the uh, PDF of a sine wave. So it's given by this formula and this... Uh, it results from the derivative of the inverse sine function. So we are going to use the PDF of time series to calculate this PDF of a um, sine wave and reach this result here. So uh, given a signal A is equal to a function of T, which is sampled uniformly over a time period T, its PDF PA can be calculated as follows. Because the signal is uniformly sampled, we have p of t is equal to 1 over time period t. The function f of t acts to transform this density from 1 over t to 1 over a. Hence, using the method for transforming PDFs, we get p of a is equal to p of t divided by the absolute value of the derivative of dA in relation to dt, evaluated that t is equal to the inverse function of x. So we are going to use uh, SynPy to calculate the PDF of a sine wave. So first I'm importing here all the functions from SynPy and I'm defining the symbols I'm going to use and here I'm defining the first equation will be x is equal to sine of t. Then 
I am finding the inverse, so it's this t is equal to the inverse of x. So here I'm finding the inverse and I have that the t is equal to the arc sine of x. So it's the inverse sine of x. So the inverse sine is only defined for minus uh, pi divided by 2 to pi divided by 2. And its uh, PDF is uniform within this. Hence p of t is 1 over pi. So here I am calculating the p of t. So this is to achieve this result. So we know it's uniformly distributed from minus pi divided by 2 to pi divided by 2. And when I calculate this uh, PDF, we have this 1 over p for um, minus pi divided by 2 to pi divided by 2. So this is the same what we calculated before for our quantization error for a uniformly distributed signal. So in a uniform distribution, and we have um, the 1 over um, the uh, full range. And so now we have already the p of t, and now we need to calculate dA of dt. So in our case, x is equal to sine of t, so we will find dx of dt, and we will evaluate at t equals to the inverse of x, so t equals to the arc sine of x. So this is what we're doing here. So this is the derivative. And then I am evaluating at t equals to the arc sine. And here is uh, the result. So we have this part here. So now to calculate the um, PDF of the sine wave, we have this pt. We have this. We can divide one by another. And we have the final result which is 1 divided by pi square root of 1 minus x squared, which is the same result that we've given here before. Now that we have the PDF of the sine wave, we can go back to the formula for the average power. So then we have that the sine wave goes from minus 1 to 1, and we will replace the PDF here times x squared and we will obtain uh, the expectation of the signal power of a sine wave. So this is uh, what we are having here. We are using sin pi. So this is the x squared times the uh, PDF of the sine wave and then we are computing this integral. And we have that the expectation of the signal power of a sine wave is 1 divided by 2 or 0 0.5 okay. as the sine wave is not a probabilistic function but it's a deterministic function we can also simply directly compute the power of um, the sine signal over t and then take the average of um, over at least one period of the sine function so this is what we are doing here so we are computing on the uh, the power, the expectation of the uh, sine wave power. So when we solve this uh, integral here, so it's important to, to um, remember this trigonometric identity that makes it easier to uh, reach this result. And then we know that the uh, cosine integrated over a complete period becomes zero. And we have the same value of one divided by two. So we calculate that the expectation of the signal power for a sine wave in two different ways. Uh, we used here this um, solution for a deterministic function, and we also used using the PDF of a sine wave. Yeah. So another thing to have in mind is that in this case, we, we've seen the sine wave from a minus 1 to 1, the amplitude from minus 1 to 1, but uh, what to do when we have different amplitudes. So let's say that the amplitude is a divided by 2. So it goes from minus a divided by 2 to plus a divided by 2. And then we'll have that the expected power is a squared divided by 8. So if we replace here in this formula, now it's not the sine anymore, but it's the a divided by 2 times the sine. So this is what we're doing here uh, in sin pi. And then we will compute this um, integral and we find that the result is a 
squared divided by 8. Yeah? And this leads to a signal to noise ratio of a squared divided by 8 divided by the step size squared divided by 12. So this is the signal power divided by the noise power. And we have uh, the signal to noise ratio of 3 times a squared divided by 2 times step size squared. And like we've been doing before, uh, if we consider that the sinusoid is at full range, and then we have the, the um, amplitude A, uh, the full range is equal to 2 to the power of the number of bits times the step size. And if we replace here, here we have that the signal to noise ratio is 1.5 times 2 to the power of 2 times n. And in dB, we have here this result. So we still have this n times 6.02 dB, but the, um, the signal for our sine wave gives us a boost of a 1.76 dB in signal to noise ratio. Yeah? So it's not a uniformly distributed signal, but it now it's a sine wave. Yeah? So we see that our rule of thumb uh, still applies here for each bit. So we get 6 dB more, but for a sine wave, we still have this, um, this boost of 1.76 dB. So here we're just using SimPy to have the equation for the signal to noise ratio. And then we replace the uh, step size and the full range here, this equation here. And then we have as the same result. So it's uh, 3 divided by 2 is 1.5 times 2 to the power of 2n. So this is the equation for the signal to noise ratio for a sine wave uh, with uh, an amplitude that goes from minus a divided by 2 to plus a divided by 2, meaning that there is a full range equals to a.